Hey guys, Mitch here with Stone Coat Countertops. Happy to be here, man. We got an exciting show today. Thanks for being here. We got three exciting projects we're gonna go over. But uh, first, these messages. Hey guys, Mitch with Stone Coat Countertops. Thanks for joining us today. I'm gonna quickly show you how we're gonna prep out this little table we picked up at. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Back to cool. Technical difficulties, that's YouTube Live for you. You're gonna see that clip here shortly when we do this table. But first thing we're gonna to do today, well, whoop, whoop, rewind, we're going to Stone Coat Countertop. You got this award, and today, Chris, go ahead and pull that up. Today is Robin Shane. She is a member of the Stone Coat Countertops Insiders, but not only that, she is everywhere. She could be one of our greatest fans. She's on all our YouTube videos. She's on all our Facebook posts, commenting, liking, sharing. Plus, she makes some pretty cool stuff. So Robin, I've gone back and you're about on every single one of our YouTube lives, so I hope you're watching today. You win the You Got This Award. Uh, give us a call tomorrow, 541-450-1976 and we'll get you that uh, package sent out today. We really appreciate all you do for us on, uh, on our Insiders group as well as every social media platform we are on. Thank you so much, Robin. So uh, last week, Marcy was here with Mike and Catherine. They had an awesome show. He made this piece over here. And what we're gonna do with this piece here, let me see if I can get that in the glare. Go back to that other roll. Okay, right up there. Follow that, uh, follow the light now, bingo. See the imperfections up on top of this piece? Mike was doing this piece with his hands. He was uh, rubbing it and kind of just playing with this piece. Well, there's lots of spots where it goes right down to the MDF, but what I'm gonna show you today is that that is no big deal. You just lightly sand this top. We're gonna apply that clear coat and that's gonna self-level over all those imperfections and this piece will be ready to be hanging on the wall. So, um, I'm also gonna go over one other thing when we're doing this piece. I'm gonna mix this batch of epoxy up in a small amount. You only need a few ounces. So the smallest I could do here is about eight ounces of epoxy. And when I put this giant mixing paddle into eight ounces of epoxy, most of the head is gonna be exposed. So it's gonna incorporate a ton of air into this small batch. That's not a big deal. The torching gets that air right out. Uh, so when you pour that epoxy, that's going to be pure white. Don't worry about that. You just need to maybe do a little bit extra torching. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. First thing we're going to do, though, is sand this top up. After epoxy has been cured over 24 hours or even, you know, 12, 14 hours, and it's hard and it's no longer tacky, you want to lightly sand with 220 grit. That is going to rough it up enough. So you get a good, uh, good coating of, of that clear coat. It goes right over that. It bonds really well. So yeah, you can see those imperfections all over it. Those are, are not a big deal. They're all going to disappear. I'm going to mix up a little bit. I'm going to mix up eight ounces here. And today, guys, we've been uh, we're little. It's just Chris and I and Cody helping out today so if you have any questions along the way be sure to uh, let us know we'll try hard to answer those questions Cody will be typing away and Chris here is going to be trying to ask me someday uh, help you guys out all right that's eight ounces and it's key, very important to start out right with your epoxy. So to start out right, you need to mix it right. You need to measure it right. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Mix for two minutes. Scrape the sides in case there's residue sitting on there. And what you'll notice out of this batch versus the bigger batch I'm going to mix for this project and that is this is going to be pure white epoxy. That's not a big deal. The torch removes that really easily.
Got any questions, Chris? Someone asked you, what up? <laughs> what up? <laughs> Get an overhead shot of that. So really, it almost looks like I put a white base color tint in there. That's just the air, because as you can see, the mixing paddle is out of the epoxy, so it's just putting all sorts of air in there. So when you're doing sample boards, little stuff like that, before you do a big project, it's totally normal for this to happen. And I'm gonna show you right now how to easily torch it out. Here, Chris. As you can see, that's pure white. No big deal. So that's an eighth inch by eighth inch square notch trowel. This is what we gauge the proper thickness when we're uh, putting the epoxy out, and the and the uh, the amount of epoxy is three ounces per square foot of mixed epoxy. This is a little heavy because I mixed some up for my other project. So I'm gonna trowel it out and I'm not gonna forget the edges today. Countertops chopping brush. Don't forget to de shed these brushes just like any other brush. Which to de shed it, just grab the grab the end of the brush, violently pull out, nah, not much coming out at all. And then pre prime that brush. If I were to take this dry brush, stab it on my epoxy, it's going to suck some out. So I just simply load it up first with a little of this uh, clear epoxy and chop away. Now chopping does a couple things. It's going to get rid of those very subtle trowel lines and it's also going to mix the epoxy one more time on the surface for you to ensure that it is mixed well and dries good. Here real quick. Now I'm going to use the Burns O Matic TS4000 trigger start torch. I'm not going to flip it and burn my eyebrows off like my brother likes to do. What we're going to do is hold this torch head about that far away, a couple inches away, and I'm going to cross my piece like I'm mowing the grass. I see a couple brush things. Let me get those out. So I, when I'm torching my pieces, I I was a kid, my dad made mow the grass, so that's kind of how I do this here. I go front to back, and my dad yelled at me if I left strips of lawn, so I like to over, over uh, overlap my torch head, and you can just watch this air clear right up. You're not going to want to keep torching. You know, go back, front to back three times. And then you need to let that epoxy cool off. As you heat it up, it becomes a little more thin and runny, which is completely normal. Right now I'm getting out little uh, brush things I missed. two torchies. It's clearing up every time, but I'm going to let it sit here. i got a debris in here. Kessner Art Studio asks uh, if the brushes can be soaked in alcohol to clean them. 
Right. What we do with the brushes after the fact, come up to A, is we will put the brushes in a jar of acetone. So acetone and the epoxy, if there's little leftover residue, it won't ruin the epoxy. Uh, same goes for alcohol. It does the same acetone with us. Uh, we could buy in those big jugs, fill up a large mason jar, put the lid on, otherwise the acetone or alcohol will evaporate and the brush, what little residue is left there will harden. So we'll do this if we're doing multiple samples in one day. We'll, uh, we'll use the brush. And if we're doing a clear coat, we'll always use a brand new brush because we just don't want to incorporate anything from the previous pour into that piece. If we're doing a bunch of color coat samples, we'll use two or three brushes and just keep using them throughout the day on to the next day. But uh, many days after that, it kind of goes south and we just get a new brush. So back over here, we let that epoxy cool a little bit. So then we could come back and torch it one more time. And every time you torch it, it's going to get more clear and more clear. So when we say torch three times, that's your big batches. Um, that's usually sufficient enough, but on these smaller batches, it may take more torching, which is not a big deal. Just keep at it. said you don't want to let that get too hot you want to let it cool off you have a good 40 to 50 minutes to torch that piece so don't try to get that air out in five minutes torching it to death you'll overheat and burn that epoxy torch it let it cool come back torch it so right now I'm gonna mix up my uh, art coat which what we're gonna do today we have two pieces we're gonna do we're gonna do a dirty pour on this table I watched Mike and Marcy and Catherine make table after table, so I wanted to make a table. And uh, what I'm going to show you is that clip that Chris jumped to here <laughs> when we were supposed to show the subscribe. But what I, I'm going to show you how I prepped out this table. So uh, earlier today, we uh, did all the prep work to get this little coffee table ready to roll. So Chris, go ahead and roll that. I'm going to be mixing while that's going. Hey guys, Mitch with Stone Coat Countertops. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to quickly show you how we're going to prep out this little table we picked up at Walmart uh, for just over $20. It comes with its own legs. Make a cool little coffee table or an end table next to your bed. Step one, trim router, quarter inch round over bit. We're going to round over the top. That helps that epoxy flow over the edges. Uh, you don't get that surface tension that builds it up and you'll have no coverage on this edge. So we like to round that over. This little top from Walmart has a, a skin of laminate on it, and I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to router that over. All right, now that that easy step of routing and rounding over that edge is over, we're gonna rough this laminate top up with 60 grit sandpaper on our random orbital sander. And then after that, apply bonding primer. Here we go. After 60 grit, go ahead and switch to 220 to smooth everything out. All right, that step's all over, nice and roughed up, which will really help that epoxy stick and the paint and primer to stick to that real smooth surface. We sell a bonding primer right on our website or you can find one locally at a paint specialty store. Step three, bonding primer. We've routed, we've sanded, 
thin coat of bonding primer is all you need here. I got my roller ready. Pour a little bit out. And the bonding primer does not need to be thick. Just needs to be a thin coat and cover the whole surface. The bonding primer we sell comes in gray. Um, you can paint right over this gray color two, three hours after you apply a thin coat of bonding primer. And bonding primer is only needed on smooth, slick surfaces. For example, cultured marble, granite, solid surface like Corian, laminate. And right there is plenty on the surface. It doesn't have to be thick, just a nice thin coat. Easy as that, we have round, rounded over the edge, keep that epoxy nice and let it flow over. We have bonding primered and sanded. We're gonna let this dry a couple hours, come back and paint and primer in one. All right guys, it's been a couple hours. Our bonding primer is nice and dry. We don't wanna keep it that gray color. So we have our bare paint and primer in one and this one's tinted natural gray. Let's get going. The way Mike does this, keeps it in there. So one good thing to remember when applying the paint and primer in one is you want to give the paint and primer in one plenty of time to off gas the ammonia out of it. If you cover up your paint and primer in one too quickly, you, have, you run the risk of your epoxy yellowing as the ammonia tries to off gas. So be sure to let that paint and primer in one dry for a minimum of 24 hours. If you're in a high humidity area, your paint and primer one's gonna take longer to dry. So you're gonna have to uh, take that into account and give yourself enough time to let the ammonia come out of your paint and primer in one. All right, again, a minimum 24 hours to let this dry. Lightly sand with 220 and you're ready for epoxy. We're gonna pump the heaters on in here and speed this process up. We're back. All right guys, thanks for watching that. So as you can see real quick, look how much clearer this epoxy is and that's because it was mixed in a 64 ounce jug. Chris, right here, let's give this one more torching. Look how much more clear it is. Quite a bit, still got some air in here. And if you get down and look, you can see it wanting to try to escape. So I'm going to give it a quick another torching. start on this little piece. Go ahead and scoot over a little bit on that shot if you can. Sure. And we're going to bust out the colander again. And today, we all know what today is, uh, uh, September 11th. So, in honor of September 11th, we're going red, white, and blue. We're going to do a colander pour. And then I'm going to give this piece away to one of our vets that is watching. We have tons of vets that have found our products. They, uh, they're using them for woodworking, for countertops, starting businesses. We love our vets, love our country, and we're gonna make a quick little red, white, and blue piece. Donnie uh, Sherbondi asks if you were an engineer in your previous career. I was not an engineer in my previous career. Wonder why she's at, they're asking that. Engineer. I've worked for lots of engineers doing countertops. So for those 
who have the troubles pouring out their base tits, I kind of just put them on with a paint stick. Does a pretty good job. A lot, heck of a lot less of a mess. Your base tint will stay in the jar and not fall all over the place. That's a quick little trick. So again, I was playing with this colander pour uh, earlier today because I don't want to have a complete belly flop on YouTube Live. And I uh, was torching that epoxy that, that it, it makes it run smoother. So when you get a bunch of residue in your colander when you're doing these colander pours, it doesn't hurt to run that torch right inside that uh, colander, warm up that epoxy to get it to flow a little bit better if you're getting a bunch of residue build up, which I've noticed happening. Red, white, and cobalt blue. Crater Lake blue, sorry. We also have an exciting new color coming out. It is, it's a mix between a metallic powder and a powderized glitter. I, I don't know what we're gonna call it yet. I don't know what it's gonna be. It's this gold. It's absolutely beautiful. Just wait and wait until you see it inside the epoxy. We're gonna use it on this piece here. So we need to name this gold. I don't know what the heck, we called it new gold a couple weeks ago, but that's not gonna be the name. So come up with some names for it. I'm gonna open it up, come in real quick up top here, Chris. Overhead. Look at that. It looks like gold dust almost. So that, we're gonna showcase that here very shortly. So what else I learned doing my colander pour is a very, very, very small amount of epoxy down helps everything a little bit. And it's not even gonna be a lot, it's a very small amount. Just a small coating over everything helps it flow a lot better. And I've got a little red in there. Ken Guthrie suggests glorious gold. Glorious gold, it is glorious. It's almost like a uh, California gold brush gold. I don't know what we can call it. We got liquid gold, pure gold, 24K gold. 24 karat. Oh gosh, not good. Now I'm gonna be getting the singing question. <laughs> Hype to it to myself. So I took the advice. I don't know who told me last week to tape down my tripods. I did that over here. I don't know why I didn't do it everywhere. But that's life. That's YouTube live for you. Getting more used to doing these are kind of fun. I had a good time last time. If you guys want to see me on the regular on Stoco Countertops YouTube lives, let me know in the comments below. I sound like my kids. My kids want to be YouTubers. It's awesome. All right, here we go. I'm going to do two pours because this board's kind of big. We're going to see what it goes like that. I didn't do that earlier. So you never know what happens. Here we go. Mixed Media Girl, or yeah. AKA Marcy, she says she'll do a, a duet with you. Marcy, you'll sing me under the table, girl. Yeah, she got pipes. She does got pipes. I was, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it, but I heard her and I'm like, oh boy, keep my mouth shut. Yeah. If it ain't Waylon Jennings, Hank Jr., I'm not doing it. Or oldies, that is, because you've all heard me do Dion. Here we go. So I'm going to do very small amounts up top and let, just let it roll on in. You got a good shot of this, Chris? I do. You bet I do. It's beautiful. It is bold, it is proud.
Kessner Art Studio says vote for Mitch. Vote for Mitch. Like it. Margaret Quist says, watch your mouth, son. Did I cuss? I don't know. <laughs> she could have just, happened. She might be just messing with you. I don't know your mom very well. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> we're going to pour this and kind of let it do its thing while we're working on the other piece. It's kind of looking cool. One thing to have 300 folks watching you, another to have your mom watching you. That's right. Especially when you're... I didn't know I was talking like a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and torch the residue in here and it helps it run. You can see that run a lot more. spread. I'm going to let it do its thing. We're going to start right here now. I'm going to go blue first. I could pretty much do this all day. It's pretty fun. I saw ATD making shot glasses yesterday with the quick coat. That was pretty awesome. An awesome idea. On Stone Coat Countertops Insiders, I saw the other day, one customer is taking plate covers, switch plate covers, and is stone coating them and selling them for 10 bucks each. Smart idea. Kenneth uh -oh. Guerra says, Mitch, you are the YouTube man. YouTube man. Thanks, guys. That thing looks like an American uh, Jerry Garcia album cover. This thing do its thing and then torch it and move it here after this other piece, Chris, is what I'm going to do. All right. A little more white. We're going to get on to the next piece. Vegas gold. Major gold. Vegas Yukon gold. Kind of gold. Yukon gold. That's a good idea. All right, real quick, I'll torch one more time here. This guy's almost done. This clear one. Pretty much there, Chris. So another another pointer um, when you finish your clear coat. You torch it, it's clear, you like what it, it's got coverage, you like the way it looks, leave the room, don't come back and check on it. Every time you come back and check, you want to see how it's looking. You're going to bring lint in. You're going to bring in fuzz. You're going to kick stuff in off, off the carpets. And it can affect your overall finish. So just finish your job, walk away, and let it cure for the first 24 hours. All right, that thing's looking kind of cool. Let's get going over here. On the big coffee table that I'm going to keep.
sort of fail there, Chris. We got suggestions for gold shield or gold metal. Just wait till they see this in here. Yeah. Let's do it right now. Stuff is cool. Fool's gold. Goldilocks. It's almost, it's almost a glitter, but it's a powder, so it's really cool stuff. And I did do another, I did a, a field test today with it. And I had a full thing of red, just like this. And I had a thing of gold. And I took my gold and poured it into the red, maybe half and half, to see if that red would totally wash it out, and it didn't. I then took that red and gold and poured it out and tilted it, and that glitter was still coming through. So, or the gold, the sparkle, whatever the heck you want to call it, it was awesome. It's going to be a versatile thing for the artist, for whatever. Uh, better not use red there. Find me a clear one. Here we go. So now watch this gold come to life. I'll try to keep my hand out of the way. That's awesome. All right, we have real teal coming in here. One of my new favorite colors. I keep using it just because I like it so much. Real teal holy field. That'll date me. C-3PO. <laughs> I like that one. C-3PO. So what are the questions? Are there any other questions out there? Any mixing, install, anything? Adrian Rodriguez wonders uh, if he can do a, uh, a quarter inch round over on top and bottom. You can use a quarter inch. That is enough. Uh, this this is a quarter inch, and I did the bottom as well. And I also did the sides, and I forgot to talk about, I kind of pre-fogged on a little bit, very subtle colors, you really can't see it. It's just a little bit of visual interest, like here, a little bit of visual interest when you have that epoxy rolling over the edge uh, to catch your eye, to give it a little more detail there. Make it a mess. All right, my next color will be Blue Earth. All these colors are available at stonecoatcountertops.com in the products page. We'll have this gold here. Uh, we don't have a name for it, so we're going to go ahead and let you guys try to name it. We're going to put a post up on Facebook and Instagram. And the name we choose will get a free half gallon kit of epoxy as well as our new gold color. So you can comment here on the live stream, you can comment on our Facebook post that I'll be putting up, as well as you can comment on this video or our Instagram after the show. Holy golden Batman. Holy golden Batman. Yeah. Fort Knox. Goldie Look Pox. Look at that. Goldie Pox. <laughs> it's like Sutter's Fort, man. Anybody know where Sutter's, what Sutter's Fort is? I don't. You don't? <laughs> I don't. Chris, it's where they discovered gold in California. Ooh, who discovered it? I don't recall. Maybe John Sutter. Ooh, <laughs> Golden Eye, yes. I like Golden that. Eye, that's cool. Classic. Yes. Yeah. 007, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, odd job. All right, again, check this out. Rather than pour your base tint, use your paint stick. I load up the top, scrape the bottom, put it in. You will not waste any base tint this way. Just don't put the stick into the epoxy, because then you'll, you'll incorporate epoxy into your base tint, which is never good. 
Put that lid back on tight. Base tint will last a, quite a while. All right. And if we don't get to any of your questions today, guys, call on in. It's hard. Uh, it's just Chris and I and Cody. So we're working hard to do it. But uh, don't hesitate to call tomorrow if we don't get to you tonight. 541-450-1976. That is the line to reach our awesome customer service agents. All right. What do I do about this spill? I will just scrape it off. All done. All right. Let's see. I'm going to put... I shouldn't have scraped it off, Chris, because I need to clear now. <laughs> I don't know if I have enough. Just gonna lube this board up just a little bit. What residue I have. So also another thing I need to talk to you. When we were watching a little video, Chris and I did a shot of me prepping out this table midway through mixing. So I mixed full speed, 64 ounces for about a minute and a half. I stopped the drill, set it down. I took my paint stick and I rotated this and scraped the entire side of the bucket. I scraped the bottom. You scrape your stick off and mix again. That ensures any residue is going to be mixed up because you don't want to pour it out and then scrape this here and have a bunch of undermixed epoxy. What's that? What is that going to do? That's going to have a sticky spot. That's going to have a soft spot. A spot that a couple days later is not all the way hard. That's undermixed epoxy. So start out right, mix it two minutes. Scrape the side, scrape the bottom, mix again for a little bit. You're golden. All right, let's rub this around. Might not have enough. I don't have any more clear. That's some more clear, but it's white. All I'm doing is lubing up this board to help my dirty pour I'm about to pour on here move a little bit. Because when it hits the raw, the paint and primer in one wood, it kind of holds it up. It has a surface tension issue there. So that's why you saw Marcy, Mike, and them using their fingers to spread out her acrylic pour she did. Same idea. But I know my brother and Catherine who are watching right now and they seal this epoxy on my hand, don't worry. I'm gonna wipe my hands before I touch any of the tools or camera equipment. All right, kind of looks like a mess, but we're gonna have some fun. What I'm gonna do with these colors is do a dirty pour. So I'm gonna pour them all into this cup and then pour them out on this surface here. Let's see what we got going. All right, let's do this. Blue Earth. <whistles> Stuff is cool looking. Boom, and we're not using red on this piece. We're using a little white though too. All right. Let's set these right here. That is cool. Blue Earth. And as I'm pouring these, I'm kind of just, my thought process is I'm pouring them in different spots, just randomly. Because when you go to pour it all out together, they're going to do their own thing and mix up. I did one of these earlier and it turned out awesome. So let's hopefully I can replicate it. 
but epoxy is epoxy. It kind of does its own thing. We're going to see what it does here. I'm using one base color tint and th uh, three metallics because this is almost a glitter, but it is a powder. So I don't even know what to classify this yet, but it's cool looking. starts getting swallowed. Have you gotten this in the overhead yet? Oh yeah. It's looking kind of cool in there. Yeah. I'm pull it up. Swirl pattern. And I haven't mixed it. I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna mix it. Just gonna keep layering and layering. Aztec gold. Nice. Like it. I'm excited to play with this gold on multiple different projects. Yeah, I can't wait to see it out on the board. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys do with this stuff. The Stone Coat Insiders blows me away almost every day. You guys are awesome. You're so helpful on there. You help each other out. You support each other. It's awesome. Keep up the good work on there. You guys are great. By the time I get on to comment, most Every single question is answered properly. It's awesome. You guys are doing awesome. It's amazing. I don't know. More gold? Yeah, Margaret says fill her up. Chris says, put more on and let it run. I'm down. I like it. What's the worst that can happen? I can look like Canadian on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> John Hallam asks, uh, which tint is more concentrated, base tint or the powder, the metallic powder or the base tint? They act differently. The powder, um, it's probably more concentrated because you don't need much. But it, the same goes for the, the base tint. But those two together is what gives you some really cool cells. They kind of fight each other. I can't really explain it, but they're both very concentrated. You don't, you saw how much white base tin I put in there. It was just a couple little scoops. I could, there's all sorts of white base tint left. I probably went a little proud or a little heavy on the metallics just because I like to make them really dense, but it comes to a point where you can add and add and add. It won't change the color. It's just, remains the same. I don't know when to stop. We'll try more of already. Yeah, I think I got too much in here. I better pour it out. Mm. Maybe not. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Midas 
is gold. And how about, let's ask you two right now, what other metallic colors do you want to see from Stone Cove countertops? Is there anything that we don't have that you'd like to see us carry? George Hinote asks, uh, how scratch proof is this when fully cured? It's very scratch proof. Uh, it is repairable and renewable easily by the homeowner as well down the road. It wears very similar to a uh, solid surface or a Corian. The difference being the heat, the, uh, the epoxy is heat resistant up to 475 degrees. So if you bring a casserole dish, half of it's on your hot pad, half of it's on the epoxy, it's not gonna fracture, uh, melt, peel, it'll be okay. Uh, you don't want to use your countertop as a hot plate as a uh, regular practice, but it's totally heat resistant. You do that with Corian, you're going to ruin it and need to be repaired by a professional. Uh, we have a sand and polish system that the homeowners can uh, renew their counters every few years as they start to show wear. You could throw a clear coat on them to, sh to cover up anywhere. But as an epoxy, it's extremely durable, heat resistant, uh, it's it's a very good product. I think I'm good on this though, Chris. Look at the top of that. I'm gonna bring it up. Whoa, and that look cool. Let's see if it'll focus. Down, bingo wings. That's cool. Dirty pour. Let's see what she looks like. Here we go. Dang, that looks kind of cool. I'm going to save myself except I got a big spill. All right. Look at those streaks it's making. Yeah. This is going to be cool. Feet stuff. Cool. Maybe I make more. I need to put enough on. We got caramel gold. Butterscotch gold also. Butterscotch gold. Like Hasty that. color names. Doesn't make me hungry. I haven't had supper yet. <laughs> You're not gonna like me when I'm hangry. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I am not that mean. You're saying. <laughs> no. It's a pretty cool color mix, though. I like it. So this art coat was mixed up, what, 20, 30 minutes ago? It's sitting in these little cups. Still good to go. Our countertop epoxy is going to be still good to go, definitely. What you want to be aware of is the quick coat. It's named quick coat for a reason. It's going to quickly set off. So if you have quick coat in a little cup like this, and you got that much sitting in there, you got about five to seven minutes to get it out of that cup before it sets off and starts smoking and gets hot and it's no good. So when using quick coat, get it out of those cups fast. Art coat, countertop epoxy, casting epoxy, flooring epoxy. Don't have that same uh, sense of urgency. You got plenty of working time. Uh, I played with the quick coat and the little like uh, candy molds. I made a skeleton for Halloween. 
this guy right here. It's not quite ready to come out, but uh, it it sets off real fast. So you can bust those things out with a quick coat. But again, quick coat is not food safe. So you're gonna wanna coat anything you make with quick coat. If you're gonna be eating out of it, drinking out of it, you wanna coat it again with a countertop epoxy or the art coat to make it again food safe. It suggested that the uh, the surface be heated. See if the colors will move a bit more. Ooh, they would. I do have my friendly co-host heat gun below me, but I'm gonna get a little bit more color on here. I should have put white down first, and that would have been good. Oh, it's looking cool. It's looking way cool. All right, I will heat it. I will take that suggestion. It out. I want to move it, but I don't want to get rid of those spheres that's going on. It's going to be awesome. The gold is uh, looking pretty soft. Mixed pretty well. Yeah, I agree. We got lots of ATD members watching. The ATD is awesome. Thanks so much for you guys' support. Your artwork is out of this world. I don't want to torch it and screw that up. I'm going to pour more. Because those spheres are awesome. That's cool. cool. Get a close up of this. I'm going to push this over. got it dripping too. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this edge just with the excess. Get a nice coating. Oh. That is cool. would just 
describe it. <laughs> R.I.P. Bob Ross, man. Oh, he's here. He's wherever there's beauty. Loved Bob Ross as a kid, man. Get a little epoxy on those on the dry paint, and it'll help. All man, that table's awesome. I don't want to part with it. Yeah, I've had at least one suggestion that it be it be left a little bit. Be left alone, or do lift it? Yeah, let's ask the chat. What do they want? Uh, for it to be left. Left alone? Bit, yeah, left alone. Right, bit. I don't want to fart with it. Yeah. Because those couple little pours I did are pretty awesome. It's going to continue to self-level. But on something like this, I'm going to walk away and leave it. Because, But come and make sure there's epoxy on all your edges. And then epoxy will continue to flow over as it self-levels. That Oops, dripping on it. I think this is the keeper. That gold is sweet in there. You see how it's a, it's it's like a glitter, but it does not act like a glitter completely. What should we do here, Chris? Let's Let's finish see. this. Do another one right here. We got a little epoxy left. Might as well. I'm gonna add a little white. Epoxy is about a half hour old now and it's still good to go. That's pretty much clear. That's cool. This is not work. I'm being paid for this. This is amazing. And let the colander do the work. Right, and what I cleaned it with was just a little bit of acetone afterwards. Because it was a bit of a, it was kind of hard to get the dried epoxy out of the holes. I had to poke it with a nail. Because I was bad and did not clean up after myself. We're about to call this Marsh Webb wants to know if he can buy the darker one. The darker one? This one? I think so. Hmm. Mike built that. But I'm sure if the price is right, he would have no problem selling it. I'm going to torch this guy real quick because I have not done it yet. And I'm going to torch this without, oop, I got some surface tension right there, without moving the colors because I really like the way the colors look. Pretty. All right. So right now, if I were to use the heat gun to remove the air, 
I'm just gonna push all my colors all over the place. As you just saw, I could torch this, get the air out of it, and the color stays right where I want it. So there's two purposes. Right tool for every job. Cool. And I think, any questions? Anything we could wrap, we could handle before we're done? Well, uh, uh, Jen Camp uh, was wondering about your method with the colander for why you're pouring on the sides of the colander instead of in the middle. Right, so Jen, that's a very good question. When I was playing with this colander and I poured everything in the center, so I did it a couple different ways. How I did a dirty pour on this piece, I attempted the colander that way. I poured all my colors in and then I just dumped the whole thing in the bottom of that colander. And all that did was create mud. It mixed everything together and it came out kind of brownish purple. Um, so as I, as you can see on this guy, they're all, it incorporates at different times. It falls through holes as it's coming through and, and gravity's doing its thing. So it's really, it, it keeps it from mixing, over mixing too much. And I'm out, so I should probably just stop. This piece is kind of cool. I want to give this to one of our vets if they want it. Um, so if there's a vet watching, go ahead and let us know your name. We'll get this sent out to you guys, man. We appreciate all you do for us and all your support. That looks stupid. Cool. So, uh, pour that epoxy on top of the colander for the best results. And I just did red, white, and blue here. One base tin. I did throw some white base tin in. Totally looks cool. I should have done that the whole time. Live and learn. YouTube live. Roll with it. Any more questions, Chris? I'm D Glovin. We're done. I don't want to touch this piece. This is going to go in my house. I love it. That gold. Name that gold for us, guys. Uh, and if you haven't, give us a thumbs up. Comment below what you want to name this gold. This gold, that gold, new gold. Whatever it is. Take a peek. It's awesome. It's lighter than air. It's beautiful. It goes with this color scheme. I hope you guys had a good time tonight. I did. I had a lot of fun. This piece is way better than the last one I did. So I'm happy about that. Thanks for watching. And until next time, from Stone Cold Counter Tops, you got this! Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again.